Hello. Today we're going to teach you how to properly remove your printhead, to do a correct reverse flush, and the correct way to do a waterfall. Uh, right now the video camera is pointed at the necessary items and solutions that's needed to properly perform this task. Uh, starting from my hand here, we have a custom made, just a little plastic piece, what we call a reverse flush jar. Uh, you want it something to look like this, like a little petri dish. Then we have a swab with the rubber tubing, that should have came with your supply package. A What we call the Husky screwdriver with a small Phillips point. Uh, a few um, swabs, lintless swabs. A cup, plastic, paper, whichever. And you have a little dump station, some tape, some textile cleaning solution, and CPS, which stands for Clog Preventive Solution, which also came with your supply package. Okay, with the screwdriver that you have in hand, uh, first things first is on the right side of your printer, you need to remove four total screws. There's one on this top end right here, one over here in the back, one on the inside skirt right here, and the other one's on the opposite side. Okay, once you remove those, then you're going to actually take out the maintenance tank, as you can see here. Once the maintenance tank has been out, then what we're going to do, uh, my little trick is I usually have my left hand on the bottom, my right hand on the top. And I will slightly bend the, the cover up a little bit and just pull out. Okay, next step, once the side panel is off, uh, what, we, what, you're, what you see here is an exposed carriage unit. Next step is we need to flip this carriage unit over in order to take the printhead out. So as you can see, we call this the blue solenoid. You'll see the little black drive screw and, and a lavender colored little plastic piece. You're gonna press and let go. You'll hear it click and it allows you to slide the printhead over. Um, what, how far you wanna slide it is if you check this gray transparent um, plastic cover here, you'll see that there is a rectangular cutout just where like the chip here, the sensor chip, could kind of fall out of. So you want to make sure it's in that general area. Next, what my trick is in order to get this belt off, is I kind of lift up on the belt, and I'll just gently push the carriage unit towards the home position. As you can see, the belt just naturally comes off the spindle and pops right out. Now, I'll bring the printhead or carriage unit back over to the cutout. Then what I will do is I'll swing the belt underneath the ribbon cables and the ink lines and place it on top of the carriage unit, just as you see in the video. Now, in order to get this printhead off, you have to be careful with the encoder strip. The encoder strip actually lies in the slit where the sensor belongs. So in order to get that encoder strip off the sensor, which is a little difficult to see on the video, but you can see if you angle your head in certain degrees and certain angles. But you want to gently push down on the encoder strip and just push away. And you'll see that it's free from the, the cable itself. Okay, next is you're gonna grab, just watch the video, you're gonna grab the print head and carriage unit, just as you see in the video like I have, and you're going to push it towards you. Now the wheel bearings closest to you actually are set through springs, so there is a spring action to it, so you can kind of push it towards you, and then pull out. And as you can see, it comes out nice and easy. As you can see, I'm moving the carriage unit. Okay, once you remove the print head off the railings, what we're going to do is we're going to flip it away from you, not towards you, but away from you. So as you flip it away, and you're just going to gently place the carriage unit on the left side here. Okay? Okay, next you're going to grab your screwdriver, and we're going to take out three small printhead screws. As you can see, the first one's there, the second one's a little 
hidden and then the third one's just sticking out here. Make sure you use a small screwdriver tip, please, uh, Phillips. Uh, the reason for it is if you use anything bigger, you'll end up stripping these screws and you're going to have to struggle a lot more taking these out and you are going to get air seeping in and that's not a good thing. So make sure you get the proper screwdriver, as you can see right here in the video. It's a small tipped Phillips screwdriver. Now I'm going to just normally just unscrew and preferably you want a magnetic tipped screwdriver just in case the screws get loose as you can see the screw hangs up and I'm going to take the three screws next is we're going to kind of open this printhead like a book so as you can see I use two hands still just to be gentle with it and I'll kind of pry it slightly and I'll just move it along and see how it flips like a book Okay, next thing is the printhead is attached to this casing, which we call a bezel, and there's also additional three screws. One, two on the corner here, and three right here. Okay, so whenever you're ready, you can take out the three screws and be very gentle. Apply um, a good amount of pressure so you don't end up stripping the screws like I explained earlier. Take your time at the same time as well. Please do not rush these steps. Okay, next is you're going to remove the bezel from the print head. Now you're going to see two pores pads in here, which I'll explain how to put it in just shortly. But you want, we want to flip the printhead over and you're going to see two ribbon cables attached to the printhead. Do not jump the gun by taking both out at the same time. Please take each ribbon cable out one at a time, just like as you see here. Okay. Now here's um, a very important guideline that you must follow. Before you actually go ahead and touch these ribbon cables, please, you have two choices. One is either you wash your hands thoroughly with hot water and soap, uh, or you can use powderless latex gloves. And the reason why we need the, these uh, couple options is because if you actually touch these ribbon cables with your fingers, since our fingers and our hands uh, per, just ex excrete natural oils. We do not want oils or foreign solution on these contacts because it can result into a burnout of the print head. So just keep that in mind. Make sure you do these steps uh, after you wash your hands. Go. Okay, next step is we're going to get some scotch tape. Nothing special, something simple, normal scotch tape. And what the scotch tape is here for is to tape and cover your dampers. So there's no excess or debris or dust going into these dampers because it will lead back into the print head, which might cause some kind of clogging. Okay, once you tape your dampers, what we're going to do now is you have your exposed print head on top of a cup, as you can see. And what you're going to do is you're going to reach for a swab. And you're going to dip a little bit of clean solution inside there. No double dipping, please, if it's stained. And we're just going to wipe off the nibs of your print head. There will be a lot of ink residue on here, and you do not want that to dry. Okay, so you want to give it a good clean. Okay, so once you do that, now you're going to reach for your Petri dish, which I like to call it. And I like to get my textile cleaning solution and pour about halfway in there. Okay, just like that. Now we're going to reach in, get our syringe. Uh, if you haven't used it yet, you're going to peel the, the wrapper off. Okay, just like this. And with the, the hosing, you're going to just stick it onto the tip of the syringe as you can see now I have an extension okay now what you're gonna do is you're gonna gently place the print head 
on the petri dish as you can see right here now m m m remember the petri dish should have enough space where the bottom part of the pr uh, print head which is the gold teflon coating does not touch the bottom part of the plastic so it's just hanging in the solution as you can see okay next um, in order to successfully do a reverse flush you're just gonna stick an empty empty syringe and we're gonna start with the whites now be very careful if you I'm just gonna take it off uh, the petri dish for a second just to show you that remember we have two slots where the ribbon cable belong into earlier when we removed them. We cannot afford to get any solution inside these two ports. It will immediately give you some kind of service code and uh, the, pretty much the definition of that service code is your, your print head is overheating and it's either due to the oil from your hands touching the silver contacts or solution going into those two slots. So please be very careful and not allow any solution to go inside those two ports. Okay. Now, once we got that out of the way, I like to start with my white ink lines first because they actually need the most uh, most awareness to it. So, uh, what I do is I actually gently stick the other end of the hose just onto the ink nib, as you can see. And with my one hand, I like to hold the tip of the uh, the rubber hose just so it doesn't come loose and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to gently just as you can see like this I gently extract the syringe and you can see that the solution is filling in it's not going to fill in all the way so it, don't think that you know you're already having clogs and you're going to see just a little action a little bubble action and this is how you successfully successfully re, uh, flush reverse flush your print head Okay, and you're going to do this about to all eight nibs, and you're going to do this process at least twice. I usually do it two to three times. Now, after you have successfully reverse waterfalled or reverse flush, well, what I like to do is I like to get a dry, lintless swab and just kind of soak up all the excess liquid around the printhead nibs just to prevent solution going into those two ports as I mentioned earlier in the video. So as you try to pick up as much liquid as you can, you don't have to be perfect, but just try to just soak up as much liquid as you can. Next is we're going to actually perform the waterfall uh, part of the training here. So what I like to do is I like to pour some cleaning solution into a nice clean cup okay and you don't need much I say like a quarter of the way to start off with and I get my syringe here which I actually rinsed out earlier with textile cleaning solution from the reverse flush so I'm just gonna go in and I'm going to extract a whole syringe full of textile cleaning solution. Next, I'm going to get my little waste dump container and I'm going to lift my print head and depending on where these two contact ports go, I'm going to raise it and slope it in the opposite direction. So when I do do the waterfall, all the excess liquid that comes out of the syringe floats the opposite direction of where these slots go into. Okay, so as you can see, my slot is on my right hand side, so I'm gonna slope it upwards towards the, towards the right, where it's actually sloping downwards on the opposite side, just like this. Okay, and I always like to start off with the white, so I'm gonna start like I, you're going to do the same process, you're going to put the rubber tubing over the nib and I like to reinforce it by holding it with my other hand. And I'm going to gently apply pressure until I see a steady stream float in. It might be a little difficult to see but you want, it actually looks like an actual waterfall. Let me see if I can get you a better view. As you can see right here. Uh, right now I'm actually using a 
print head that has been waterfalled previously so as you can see the stream is nice and even as you can see right there okay so you want to use about a half syringe full and move on to the next ink uh, print head knit and you're gonna repeat the step right there okay and if you run out of cleaning solution just go ahead and grab some more in the cup and proceed Now, just like what we did before, you're going to have some excess uh, liquid just, just formed in the top part of the print head. So you're just going to get a dry swab, and like we, what we did before with the reverse flush, you're just going to try to soak up as much liquid as possible. <clears throat> Next, we're going to get a dipped swab in cleaning solution and just gently rub the face of the head just to clean off the excess now the amount of pressure you're putting the swab is just contact with the print head and that's it you're not adding additional pressure and you want to stroke it one direction as you can see in the video and the good thing is a lot of ink gets stuck on the corners here too so if you have the time just try to collect and take out some of the stains, as you can see, on the sides. Okay. Good. Next, we're going to reassemble the printhead back onto the carriage unit. Don't forget the tape. Remember, we're going to have to remove the tape that we placed on the dampers. So just as you see, I'm just taking the tape right off. Okay, next is we're going to actually put the ribbon cables back onto the print head itself. So you always want to flip the print head over where you see the gold Teflon sheet facing you and the slots where the ribbon cables go on the right side. Okay. Now when we put this ribbon cables back on, remember you want to have as less oil as possible on your hands. So if you haven't washed your hands in a while, Remember, wash your hands thoroughly with hot water or warm water and soap or use powderless latex glove before putting this on. Okay, as you can see my hands, I just washed them. So I'm going to go ahead and try it. And also, when you handle these ribbon cables, do not touch them by the contacts. These silver little contacts. Okay, so we're going to start with the double zero. Okay, which is going into the bottom part of the print head. So as you can see, I'm just going to reach in and grab one and as you can see I'm not even grabbing it anywhere near where the blue tab is. That's where the silver contacts are. So I'm just going to go in, I'm going to fit it in to the bottom slot and instead of putting pressure on my right, I like to apply pressure to both hands like uh, two cars colliding into each other for example. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to push on my right hand in to the left, and then I'm going to put my left, push my left hand into the right. So I'm kind of evenly distributing the, the force. So as you can see, I'm just going to go ahead and push them in. Just like that. Okay, and then I'm going to reach for the zero cable and do the same thing. Remember, keep your fingers or skin away from the silver contacts. And once you line them up to the slot, and you're just going to push on both your hands. And there you go. Okay. Now, I usually gently just place the print head over the dampers. And inside the bezel piece, you're going to see two pores pads or just cotton pieces. Now, you want to make sure they're in the slots, just like this. Okay, you just want to push them in. And they kind of have the design, so just try to kind of use some logic and you'll see that it fits right in. But hopefully this video reference will kind of make it a little bit easier on where to place the pores pads. So once you place the pores pads in, now you're going to actually put this and connect it to the print head. So you want to be very careful. I like to put it in in this view because I know that I can see the area of the print head and make sure that it's not being scratched or touched by a foreign piece or product. 
So I'm just going to go in and make sure that the black ramps and the silver bars are completely flush. Okay, just like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and reach for the smallest print head screws. Remember that the print head screws have a smaller head than the outside bezel screws. So this one's the bezel screw. It's a little bit thicker head than the print head screw itself. Okay, so you're going to get three print head screws and you're just going to place one screw at a time and with your small Phillips screwdriver you're going to kind of grip the screw, place it in the hole and our strategy to this is we like to turn it counterclockwise first because remember we're dealing with plastic pieces and the more you just tighten it the uh, eventually your plastic housing the holes these screws will strip and your screw will not lock in. So we need to find its original threading. So in order to find the original threading we turn it counterclockwise until we hear a click or we feel the screw slightly dip in. So I'm turning it very slowly counterclockwise and I hear a click. So once I hear a click then that's my cue to tighten the screw. Okay, once you place and screw the three print head inner screws, we're going to actually close the book. That's what I like to clo it, uh, call it. As you can see, I'm swinging the print head over like a book. Okay, so once you swing it over, you're going to see a grounding fork. Literally, it looks like a fork right here in the bottom left hand side. And you're going to see on the side of the bezel a copper looking piece here. So that grounding fork has to be on the outside part of this ground, uh, this uh, copper piece. So in order to get that, I usually use my small little screwdriver. Kind of slightly bend it. Do not jump the gun and bend it all the way. But you just want to just give it a little push just so that the bezel can fit in there. Just like that. Then what you're going to do is you're just going to gently kind of drop and close the actual printhead onto the dampers. Next is you're going to get your last three screws and you're going to repeat the same process. Remember you're not just automatically screwing it, you're turning it counterclockwise until you hear a click or you feel it dip in and then you can turn it uh, normally to lock it. So I'm going to turn it counterclockwise. This one doesn't really have a click but I do feel it dip in. So once I feel a dip, then it's my cue to tighten it. And you're going to repeat it with the other three screws. Okay. okay, now that you successfully screwed and locked your printhead into the carriage unit, you're going to see these black ramps. If you see it stained, um, gently soak the swab. You don't want to fully soak it because the, the liquid might float in too much. But you just want to kind of clean it off. You know, um, just... Don't accept your your black ramps or your silver bars to be dirty like this. Because I myself do not accept it. And as you can see, I am cleaning it off. And then you get the dried swab and just rinse off the liquid. Okay. Now, what we're doing next is we're going to actually put this print head back onto the rail and place the belt and the encoder strip to its rightful place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the print head, or I'm sorry, the carriage unit, gently with two hands, and I'm going to flip it towards me this time. As you can see, it just comes in nice and naturally. Then I'll grab the belt, and I'll swing it underneath the ribbon cables, and gently try to place it above the railing, just as you can see. Next, I'm just going to gently plop this on behind on top of the railings. And remember, this sensor, encoder sensor, must fit in to the cutout that you see over here. So I'm going to have to match it carefully. And once I see that it's matched with the cutout, I'm going to start with putting the wheel bearings closest to me onto the railings first. Be very careful. This is one point you have to notice. As you can see here, you see that these railings are flaps. 
right? So they're not one piece, they open and close. What I generally see some certain people do is they put the wheel bearings inside the flaps rather than on the outside where it's supposed to be. So please be aware of it. If the wheel bearings end up going inside here, you'll have severe error codes. So please, please make sure when you're putting the carriage in the back that the flaps of the railings for the wheel bearings are nice and closed and that the wheel bearings are resting on the outside part of the railings. So again, I'm going to just try to repeat what I'm going to say. I'm going to place the belt nice, nicely on top. Then I'm going to make sure that the encoder sensor is in the cutout. Okay. Then I'm going to place the wheel bearings onto the railings. And remember, they have the springs here, so I'm going to push towards me and then drop the back end of the carriage unit onto the railings. Like I said, remember, double check to make sure that your wheel bearings are on the outside part of the railings. Very important. Okay. Once you go ahead and do that, you just want to gently push it left and right, not too much. Just make sure it's nice and smooth. Then with your, rib, uh, with your belt, uh, you're going to see that it does have a little bit of spring action to it. As you can see, it bouncing left and right as I push it. So what you're going to do is you're just going to have your left hand hold the carriage unit and your right hand is going to stretch the, cape, um, the belt as much as possible. All you're doing is you're just allowing just a little part of the belt to be on the spindle. Then, with your left hand, you're going to push the carriage unit back to the home position, just like this. And as you can see, the belt naturally goes back onto the spindle, just like that. And then you can just let it click all the way, and then hit the dry screw button. And then push away, and just double check to see if your belt is on the spindle 100%, just like that. Okay, so once you successfully place your belt onto the spindle, last but not least, we need to place the encoder strip back into the slit of the sensor. So what you're going to do is you're going to gently push down and bring it towards you a little bit and make sure it fits into the slit. Now you want to angle your head, uh, just pretend this video camera is my head, angled. And you just want to see and make sure that the encoder strip is nicely in and fitted into the slit of the encoder. Once you do that, you're done with the encoder strip. Okay, after you place the encoder strip into the uh, encoder sensor, what we're going to do is we're going to slide the carriage unit back until you hear it click. And once it's locked, you're going to grab your side cover. And you're just going to close it up. And place your maintenance tank in. And screw the four screws that we took out earlier. And that concludes uh, us how to successfully remove your printhead, how to successfully reverse waterfall, and how to successfully waterfall.